So we're going to look at wood frame systems, and I'm going to show you all the different parts that go into framing. So this is going to be all the terms that you need to know. So as you are watching this, make sure you have the assignment open, and you're going to have to pause it a lot to kind of draw the arrows in and label all the different components and write down what it is that they do. Uh, so just kind of get uh, get ready to pause. Psh, radio 9, we got a bug. So the first thing is floor joists. They are horizontal members, and they carry the loads of on the floor and the ceiling. We are not going to put on floor joists when we build our shed, when we frame our shed that we're going to make. And we're not going to have floor joists, but anytime you, you have a floor, you have those on there. Then comes on the subfloor, and usually these are four foot wide here by eight foot long sheets that are called OSB, oriented strand board, and um, that's just used to add extra support so that those floor joists can't tilt side to side and obviously you need something to stand on. So then you'd put uh, your wood floor or your tile or whatever right on top of that. Next is the walls. The vertical members on the walls are called studs or Mr. Thomas's. <laughs> and they are the um, framing members in this construction so the ones that you see here are two by fours and they're spaced 16 inch on center so oftentimes on center is abbreviated OC so that would be a good thing to note OC you're gonna see 16 inch OC and that means on center that's also gonna be on your quiz so make sure that you know that that is a common way that you would see it you always see it that way in blueprints and plans and things like that now the size of the wall will the of the two by four if it could be a two by six depends kind of on the climate and how much insulation you want to have in here with a shed that doesn't need to be insulated two by four is cheaper you always have a top plate on top of the wall so you can see now we have two members here and you can see that they overlap I'm gonna go back a slide this left one is the long one here and this is the short one but when we put the second top plate on this is a long one and it overlaps and that helps tie them all together so that's your second top plate your sole plate or oftentimes when I've worked in construction that was called the bottom plate um, that's the part that goes on the bottom side and so you'll build this entire piece all in one a bottom plate studs and the initial top plate and then you usually lean the walls up and then you put your second top plate on to kind of tack them all together so that's kind of uh, the way that this goes together the window opening has to be framed in. You don't cut it in later. So this is um, an example of what it would be like if it was framed in. And the top part is called the header. The header is just a, a 2x4 on end. And usually it's not a 2x4. If it's a bigger window, it'll be a 2x6. Might even be a 2x8 if it's a really, really um, big opening. And that just adds strength so that the ceiling doesn't crush down on the window and crack the glass. Uh, you need a place to rest it, and that's just called the sill. Then on top of it is the trusses. These trusses go all the way down and overhang down below. And I know we talked in our architecture models that usually you come straight out first. And oftentimes you will see it come straight out and then go diagonal up like that. Uh, but in this example with the shed, we're not really concerned so much about having um, a nice finished look underneath here. So you would actually probably see these, um, these trusses come up underneath it. You wouldn't finish that when they hang down like this. So anyway, these are trusses usually as triangles. Then you have insulation. Insulation is for um, heat and for sound. So we have it on the walls and then you're going to have it um, just in this area here so you kind of have an insulated box. Next you have sheathing. Sheathing goes on the outside of the insulation directly on the outside and then you also sheathe on top of the trusses. Again these are also typically four by eight foot sheets and it's, um, it's similar but of a different thickness and it's all based on the local codes of the flooring. Then you have your vapor barrier. Vapor barrier goes on the outside only of the wall sheathing, and it's usually uh, a material called Tyvek. Um, people also call it house wrap, just because it looks like a big white um, wrapping that they put. Sometimes you'll see it as green, so as houses are being built, oftentimes you'll see they kind of have this, you know, it's either a solid green color or a solid white. It looks like wrapping paper all the way around it, um, and that's what goes on before the sheeting and that's used to prevent air and water to go in but it does um, it's supposed to allow moisture to wick out then you have your siding and so siding is just going to be plywood or it's going to be boards or shingles it all depends on your architecture um, style but that would go directly on the outside of this and the thing that really would protect it if it's boards is paint so you always want to make sure you have paint because then the wood can't rot because the paint is protecting it. So if your paint is starting to chip in your house and you let it go for too long, it can actually ruin your siding and you got to re 
side your house. Um, unless you have brick or stone, in which case it doesn't matter. Then you have underlayment on the roof, and this is, um, it's called roof felt, often it's called tar paper, and it protects the roofing material here, this wood, uh, because water can't get through it. Above that, you put shingles, and you can see these shingles are overlapped, so because water is always running downhill, so as water runs down on top of these, it's not going to seep up underneath here. If anything does get up on here, then you have this tar paper to kind of protect it, and then hopefully it still travels down, um, all the way down to the roof edge. And that's it. These are all your terms, so make sure you have all those listed in the assignment. Then you're ready to take the quiz. Once you ace that, then we're ready to frame.